it's Friday the 1st of October, uh, so this is the first day of the Darren Shanathon. I'm just editing video explaining about the Darren Shanathon, and whilst I'm waiting for it to finish, I thought I would get started on the first book in the Darren Shan saga. The reason I'm currently sat on the floor is that somebody has taken my seat and is being very grumpy about it. Aren't you, Pippi? Okay, so the camera died because I haven't charged the batteries in ages and the cat has moved so I have settled in and I've read about nearly half, half of Cirque de Freak so I think I'll actually get it finished tonight. It's only a uh, quarter to eight. Um, I am also watching some nice autumnal themed TV um, in between reading certain chapters because that's the way I tend to read is I'll watch an episode of something then like read for half an hour then watch another episode of something and then tomorrow is obviously the start of the weekend and I'm hoping to get kind of ahead of this thing by reading maybe two books tomorrow <laughs> uh, so already enjoying it because the nostalgia is definitely there Definitely a children's book though, not in like a bad way, I'd say like it's more of a tween than young children book, but I do think this was Darren Shan's first series and I also think you can tell in that I do believe his writing style evolves later on and it's just a little bit more amateur than I remember, but that doesn't mean I'm not enjoying it, I am still very much enjoying it. And I will probably see you tomorrow. Good morning, it's Saturday and it is the second day of the Darren Shanathon. I finished the Cirque the Freak last night and still really enjoyed it. It's definitely a good like starting point to the series. By the end of the book Darren has been turned into a vampire um, and I stand by what I said before when I said it's definitely, it is definitely aimed at like 10 to 11 year olds but I also think that when I said it was due a bit more amateur in its writing style I'm not necessarily sticking by that because I realised we're reading the story from Darren's point of view and he's like um like a 12 to 13 year old kid so it's understandable in the way that it's written but anyway um i am moving on to the second book which is the vampire's assistant i'm hoping to finish this and also the third book today which is definitely doable but also um I'm going to be spending most of today tidying and stuff because I had a very busy month in September and whilst I was still like cleaning my house and stuff um, because I have a long haired cat so I need to like hoover regularly things have started to get very messy and that I'm one of those people that I can't I can't deal with disorganisation it really stresses me out so I'm going to be spending most of today doing kind of, well I guess you'd call it an autumn clean because it's not spring but that's what I'm going to spend most of today doing and also I don't know if you can see um it's probably too far away but I, I currently have a pile <laughs> of fuzzy pumpkins on my sofa because I'm getting all of my um autumnal decorations I call them because I don't I don't decorate for Halloween I decorate for autumn and yes I am one of those insufferable people <laughs> but I went out and I got my hair cut this morning because my fringe was just too long and it was bugging me and the little gift shop that is in my village has put up their autumn like display and yeah, I yeah, so I left with many, many pumpkins and 
like little mushrooms and things which to be honest once they're up they're probably not coming back down again <laughs> because they're so adorable and the color scheme for autumn it just makes me live so i'm going to get on with what i said i was going to do and i will see you later So it's now four o'clock and I finished all of the tidying that I wanted to do. I'm much more relaxed now. Everything is nice and tidy again. And I am about halfway through Vampire's Assistant. Um, I forgot to say, I think I misspoke earlier when I said that at the end of Cirque du Freak, Darren is a vampire. He's not, he's a half vampire, which means that he's got like some vampire powers but he can still walk around during the day and stuff and he can survive longer than regular vampires without drinking any blood so um at this point in the series of vampires assistant darren and mr crepsley have returned to the cirque de freak and uh, because darren was getting very lonely just him and mr crepsley so he's now settled into the search freak and making friends, but he's still refusing to drink blood in the hopes that his vampirism will like wear off, even though he knows that that's, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and um, I'm also currently joined by a little someone. Vampire baby. No. Pippin, please don't, please don't attack the candle. This will not end well for you. Pippin. Yes, you. Can you step away, please? So it's now about six o'clock and I've just finished Vampire's Assistant and I'm going to get started on Tunnels of Blood which is number three but I'm going to give myself a break from reading for about an hour or so and finally watch Midsummer because I have yet to see it so October seemed a good time to <laughs> finally get around to that. Um, and I'll let you know how far I get with Tunnels of Blood. I imagine I'll finish it tonight because it's, once again, it's only like 160 pages. And then if I get two done tomorrow as well, then we are on good track for doing this 30 books in 30 days, or 31 days thing. <laughs> It's Sunday now, Sunday afternoon, because I woke up very late and have done chores and things. Um, I just finished filming the September wrap-up video, which will go up probably before this one. I finished, I managed to finish Tunnels of Blood last night, and Darren Shah has definitely like hit his writing stride at this point. Some of the things that were annoying me in earlier books have stopped. Um, but one thing he still does is recap information we already know quite regularly. He starts each book with a recap of what's happened in the past like couple of books. Which I guess when it was being published because there were probably like 
a year or so between each book that made sense but it's it's a bit like when you watch a tv show and there's like a three minute recap of what happened in the last episode that's just not really needed and then later in the text he'll relay information that doesn't matter how long the part of the books are you still know like for example there's one point where he stops a conversation to explain that someone that the guy was referencing is a, this person that we already know. Um, I think it was um, Mr. Crafty said, I'll go and check with Hibernus. And then you get like basically brackets saying that was Mr. Tool's first name. It's like, I know, we know this because Hibernus is a, a character that we've seen multiple times. We know his name is Hibernus Tool. You don't need to remind us of that. But that aside, I'm still enjoying the series. Like I said, we've hit our stride now and we're getting more into, we know Darren as a character, we don't have to build up more of that at the moment. We're just, we're getting into the world of the Darren Shan saga. So I've just started Vampire Mountain. Um, I also have the next one, Trials of Death, with me on the sofa. I'm hoping to get both of them done today, which is definitely doable because the only other thing that I kind of have to do today is some meal prep for my work lunches that shouldn't take too long. Once I've done the preparation, I just need to stick it in the oven and that'll give me another half hour to read anyway. So um, I'll see you again uh, if and when I finish this one. So meal prep is done and so is Vampire Mountain. Um, I'm def Darren has definitely hit his stride now, I think I said that earlier, but um, I'm definitely remembering why I enjoyed this series so much. The first three books were like slow going because we were just learning about Darren and Mr. Crapsley, but now we're getting into like vampire culture and the bigger overarching story. Whereas the others were more of like, um, if it was a TV series, it'd be like early Monster of the Week type episodes. We're now getting into like the big overarching plot. Um, as the name of the book suggests, they are heading to Vampire Mountain, which is like the vampire's headquarters almost. Um, it's where you can go to meet up with other vampires and... Um, every 12 years there is what is called the council, um, which is why Darren and Mr. Krebs are going because it's the first council that has f happened since Darren has been turned into a half vampire and they're going there so that Mr. Krebs can present him as his assistant and also sort of ask for forgiveness because he shouldn't have made a child into a vampire because of the reduced ageing and all that. Um, we also learned, we learned late in the last book about a sort of subspecies of vampires called the Vampirinese who split from the vampires a couple of hundred years ago because they believe that you should drain a human entirely when you drink from them whereas vampires don't believe in killing humans, uh, they just take a little bit of blood as and when. Um, and we know that there was like a big war between the two and both sides almost died out a couple of hundred years ago because of this war. But we're getting stirrings of the Vampanese again. Um, this is also where we get a deviation from like regular vampire lore. Like in movies and stuff, vampires are these elegant, quite sexualized beings, whereas in this universe vampires are closer to the way I'd see a lot of like werewolves de depicted in that they are immensely strong warriors that spend most of their time like either training or fighting each other, not viciously but they constantly want to prove themselves um, and put themselves through trials and combat is just a way that they do that. So a lot of them are like big and hulking and covered in scars, like missing limbs and eyes and stuff. And even though vampires can live hundreds and hundreds of years, a lot of them don't really reach much past like their vampire sixties because they're constantly throwing themselves into danger because that's just what they do. 
So the trek up to Vampire Mountain was a lot, was very like difficult because they're also very traditional. So to get to Vampire Mountain you're not allowed to wear shoes, you can't uh, flit, which is something that vampires can do where they move really fast, you have to just walk there. So that kind of gives you a bit of the idea of the way the vampires live, they don't believe in like bows and arrows or guns, all fighting has to be hand to hand. And um, yeah, so I've started the next book which is Trials of Death, where Darren is having to prove himself to the vampires by undergoing something called the Trials, which is a series of five tests out of a possible 17, where if he survives he will be accepted, if he doesn't pass the Trials he will be killed. <laughs> Think, think you can just about see me. <laughs> Could be able to get my tripod out, so you're just on a shelf at the moment. But it is now Monday evening. It is nearly seven o'clock. Um, I finished Trials of Death last night, just before going to bed. Um, I've been at work all day today, but I have made a start on the next one, which is Vampire Prince. Uh, this one is or was my favourite from the series, and I. Remember that because this is the one that I got signed. Um, I'm, I'm definitely like, as I'm reading this, I'm remembering things about the series. Um, and like I said before, remembering why I liked it so much. Um, Darren has just been through a bunch of trials and even though like all of the books are only this long, it doesn't feel rushed. Like the trials began and ended in The Trials of Death. That was... It, but, and yet each one still felt tense and now we are definitely getting into like big overarching story there's been there's um been like a betrayal and he's like fighting for his life at the moment and I think I remember how this goes but I can't I'm not entirely sure so I should know by the end of this and um so I'm hoping to finish this tonight and then I will get on to the next book which is I have it here. Uh, Hunters of the Dusk, which is number seven. So I'm halfway through the first series and not doing too badly, actually. I'm very glad that I sort of got ahead of it over the weekend. So now I've got a little bit more leeway for when I move on to the slightly thicker series. Um, and I will probably see you again tomorrow. Hello. It is now Tuesday the 5th and I have finished Vampire Prince. I finished it last night. Um, I had forgotten that, that these this series actually works in three book arcs. So the first arc was the Cirque de Freak arc, which was Cirque de Freak, the Vampire Assistant and Tunnels of Blood. The next arc was the Vampire Mountain arc, which was Vampire Mountain, Trials of Death and the Vampire Prince, which is probably my favourite arc um, because it's all about learning the ways of the vampires and about Vampire Mountain and everything like that. I am now on to Hunters of the Dusk, which is the start of the Hunters series, and we're getting into like, even though it's only book seven, like almost endgame territory, we're building up ready for endgame. Uh, the Hunters arc is all about the war between the vampires and the vampanese, and the rise of something called the Vampanese Lord, which is like prophesized to bring around the end of the vampires so we're just we're at the start of that now um and hopefully i'll finish that book tonight but it is slightly longer than the others only by like 10 or so pages so i don't see why i wouldn't um but i'll see you again once i finish that one you may be able to hear the dehumidifier in the background and if you can i am sorry i'm also going to move you there you go uh hi so it's now the 7th. It's Thursday. I didn't film at all yesterday because I was busy, um, but I finished Hunters of the Dusk, which is number 7. Um, it's the start of the Hunters trilogy, and even though I said I'm pretty sure the Vampire Mountain trilogy in this set of 12 is like my favourite, I'm really enjoying this part of the story. Um, we've just had like the big prophecy and Darren the cat's squeaking at me. So the prophecy has been told, they've been t um, the vampires have been told that they 
have five chances to stop the Vampanese Lord from rising to power. Um, and usually I'm like a bit meh about prophecy stories because it feels a bit easy. But this one, we've, it's been very set into this universe that whilst there are like lines of fate that you can go down, it's not really just like a one thing that's going to happen. So there's still enough of like a control aspect to make this not feel super like, well, this is going to happen anyway. Um, so, um, as I said earlier, I was quite busy yesterday, so I didn't finish yesterday's book, which is Allies of the Night. I'm over halfway through, though. Um, but we're starting to meet old friends and old enemies again, um, whilst they've, like, Darren and Mr. Krebs have gone back into the world and they're not just in Vampire Mountain anymore. So, yes, it's exciting. Things like ramping up um and you can also tell from the fact that the books are now slightly bigger only by like 10 or 15 pages but the stories are getting longer so um i'm gonna cook some vegetarian nuggets because i'm an adult and i'm going to finish this and then i'm going to get on to the last one in this arc which is killers of the dawn uh, which hopefully I'll be able to finish tonight. If not, I'll finish it tomorrow. Um, I'm still like a day ahead, so we're all good. Um, and then by the end of this weekend, I should have finished the Darren Chan saga. And that'll probably be the end of this video. Um, I'm going to do the reading vlog for this video and then for the Demonata series. And I might just leave the rest for the monthly wrap up. But I'll see you later. Hello! Um, it's uh, now Friday and I have finished both Allies of the Night and Killers of the Dawn. Um, I take back what I said earlier about the Vampire Mountain like arc being my favourite one. The Hunter's arc is so good. Um, like I still, obviously I still really enjoyed the Vampire Mountain arc. I really liked the Trials of Initiation in that because that's something I, I like in fiction and stuff is when you have like come of, of age trials or just trials in general I guess that's one of the reasons why I think I liked the training bit of you know the Hunger Games and things like that I don't know it's just it's a trope that I enjoy but the the Hunter's arc I think is definitely where Darren Shan not figured out how to write because it's not like his writing was bad beforehand but it's like he's he's getting into it now and like the repetition that was bugging me is dropping off quite a bit and um just the fact that we it's like all converging we're bringing old characters that were from earlier arcs together and there are twists and turns happening and you're like there's like it's the big bad that we're going for and then um, Killers of the Dawn, like, ends with a big revelation. But, I mean, because I've read it before, I was like, I, I, was, I saw it coming, I was like, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I remember this being a thing. So I was not surprised when it happened. I was almost like, yes, I knew it, I called it. Um, I remembered that being a thing. Um, so, anyway, that's the Hunter's arc over and done with. We're on the... I think it's called the Souls arc, starting with Lake of Souls. Um, this is the last three books in this series. Just I'm putting them like back on the shelf as I finish them because they have a chair full of books. But anyway, um, so the Lake of Souls. This is the point in the in the books that I've like forgotten what happens. Um, I'd remembered quite a few plot beats from earlier as I was reading them. I don't know if it will be reminding me as I read these but I'm excited and I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to read not just for this challenge but I'm like I'm wanting to get through them because I want to I want to finish this story and I want to get to the end. So I keep having to revise my, oh, the last arc was my favourite, because although I do think the Hunter's arc so far is definitely still my favourite, 
I have to revise my favourite book being The Vampire Prince because The Lake of Souls was really, really good. This was where Darren Shan basically showed us like how good he is at creating other worlds and like just the limits of his imagination and stuff. And also where he showed off how good he is at describing just unnerving things. Um, so yeah, we, we've moved into like, this is not just end game for this series, this is like end of the world shit now. Um, it's not just the vampires and the vampires, this is the future of the entirety of planet Earth is like at stake in this war between the two clans and I don't know if I ever said before that the vampires and the vampires are now at like just all out war um, but they are <laughs> and um, And even though I'm not like the biggest fan of sort of like prophecy stories and stuff, I really like this one, probably because it's so big. And it doesn't, it's not like, when I say I don't like prophecy stories, I don't like messiah stories. It's the reason why I don't really like Dune or I didn't like that plot line of the first three Star Wars movies where it's like you were the chosen one this isn't this isn't that kind of thing this is just a the strings of fate have varying degrees of like paths split and there are certain parts in history where there are multiple paths that it could go down and then certain parts in history where it's like one of two and what happens if neither of those choices are particularly good which one do you choose when there is like there is kind of like a lesser of two evils but you sort of have to sacrifice yourself in order to get to that one so um started the last one um it's currently half eight so i will i will finish this series tonight and then i will do like a wrap up tomorrow um just before i get started on the demon Arthur series but yes there was it was like a rocky start in the first three in the arc i was like oh okay maybe i've like outgrown this series and now we're getting into like from that point on i was like no i really like this series because inter like darren Chai is really good at building lore and leaving breadcrumbs that then start to Initially, you don't even realise that they're breadcrumbs, and then right now, in like quick succession, things are starting to come together, and all of the loose ends are tying up that you didn't even necessarily know were loose ends. You're like, oh my god, okay. So, yes, I'm, I'm kind of hyped. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get back to reading this. Um, this one is, I think, uh, 190 something pages. I'm on page 38 at the moment, but like I said, it's half eight by 10 o'clock I imagine I'll be done so um but I'll see you tomorrow for the final thoughts and like wrap up hey it's Sunday the 10th and uh late last night I finished the saga of Darren Shan um so I thought I'd set up the camera properly and give you a bit of a rundown on just my general thoughts because I don't think the other clips in this are all that coherent <laughs> So, um, overall I gave the, sort of like the entire series four stars, um, there were certain books like Lake of Souls and The Vampire Prince that got five stars out of me, but for the most part it was like four stars all around. Um, yeah, I, when I was younger I used to not like the ending of this series, I didn't think it was a good ending, I thought it was a bit wishy-washy, but reading it now... It's, it's actually like a really nice way of tying up the series and I think some people may think it's like a little bit of a cop-out but I don't I don't think it is um, so yep yeah, so that's 12 books in nine days technically so I'm nicely ahead of the curve I am going to get started on the Demon Arter series and I'm going to do another reading vlog for that but as of right now I'm gonna go and meet a friend and we're gonna go and have tea so 
I'm, I still think I'm going to be able to finish at least one book today. But I'm going to edit this. Uh, I still I still am going to stick to my s uploading every Saturday because I feel like if I started uploading multiple times a week I'd want to keep doing that and I have a full time job so that's not that's not going to happen um, at the moment. I don't yeah I don't really know what else to say I was going to just sit here and oh yeah yeah yeah. I remember what I actually wanted to say with this. So, yeah, overall thoughts, four stars for the entire series. Things that I liked, um, Darren really knows how to build lore and like world build. So his version of the vampires and like vampneys and then other things that were in there like such as witches and agents of fate and stuff like that all felt really well rounded and really well thought out. Um, when he actually gets into describing in gruesome detail certain things, like in The Lake of Souls, that entire book was just so well des described and so imaginative. He he's really good at that, much better than at that than sort of just describing everyday things. But um, yeah, he's a he's a fantasy writer, really. I know for a fact that he really gets to flex that power in the Demonata series, and I'll get to that later, but in terms of like character building and stuff, as soon as, yeah, all of his characters are well-rounded and well-written. Things that I wasn't super into was, one, the fact that he tended to repeat himself an awful lot, like each book and I mean I don't I don't know how what the time distance between each book being published was but each book starts with basically a recap of everything that has happened in the series already so as someone who was reading these book in, books in rapid succession that was very come on I know I know this I don't need like a 10 minute episode recap of what's happened previously and to be honest, even if it was just a recap of what happened in the last book, that would be okay. But he describes basically the entire plot of the si the series from start to finish at the start of each book. And I'm like, it's just not needed. And then there were other things that he repeated within the text that weren't needed. Even for, I think, the age that these are aimed at, which is new adult, you don't need to be explaining this information over and over and over again we get it we understand you don't need to <laughs> you don't need to tell us these things multiple times um an issue that i had at the beginning was like lack of female characters but that did sort of fix itself as we went through and each female character was she was her own individual character it wasn't like a copy and paste oh well we need a woman again so here's another one um, they were all strong but not just in it like we did have a couple of strong women that were strong in the kick your ass kind of way but then we had also strong female characters that were just strong in that they were just well-rounded well-written characters um, there were a couple of times where he did a bit of a tell don't show in that like our main villain we were told multiple times that he's just pure evil and whilst there were a lot of things that he did that were just something that a maniac would do and you're like yes this per this person is like an actual psychopath just telling us that he's pure evil even like before he's done things didn't like i think you're trying to scare me and it's not it's not working just show show me in his actions what he is don't tell me what he is but overall still really enjoyed it and I don't think that was just a nostalgia thing. There were parts where I was reading, I was like, oh my god, yes, I remember this happening. And then there were other things that I'd completely forgotten about, so the twist still caught me off guard, and I was like, oh, oh wait, yeah, no, that was a thing. So I'm excited to get to the Demon Arter series, because this one he wrote after the saga of Darren Chan, and I'm hoping, like, I don't remember 
that the repetition was too much of a thing in that but I also hadn't remembered it was a thing in this series so I'm hoping that that is a a crutch that he gets over but yeah that is the end of this reading vlog I know a lot of other reading vlogs you actually film yourself reading but I don't know is that something that people people enjoy I'm not sure I'm still this is my first reading vlog so don't even know if anyone will watch this but either way um I will see you in the next one bye